Hi friends. In this video, let's discuss about how to create a calendars in the Power BI desktop. There are two ways of creating the calendars in the Power BI desktop version. And we might need to know a little knowledge on the DAX as well. Ideally, it is a straight forward function, but it is a DAX function to create a calendars. So before going to create a calendars, let me load a data set into my Power BI window. So if you say this is an empty Power BI page, let me load one data set. So before going to load, let me show you what is the table which I am planning to load. So if you see here, there is a table with the name of employee which contains ID employee, employee name, salary, joining date and department number. So there are around five columns with the name of the columns are like this ID employee, employee name, salary, joining date, department number and that's it. So let me load this into the Power BI page. So let me click on get data. <clears throat> So let me give my server name as dot slash SQL and to click on OK. So let me select my database name is sample under that my table name is EMP. See once I select the table name as EMP in the right side I can see the data. If you see I have around six records with similar same names whatever I seen. Let's click on load. So it may take a while based on the size of the data. So we have to wait till that particular. Yeah, now the data has been loaded. Data has been imported to the uh, Power BI page with the name of the data set as EMP. And you can see the name columns as department number, EMP name, ID employee, joining date and the salary. So these are the list of columns we have in the employee data set. So here if, if I want to go for any visualization, I can simply drag and drop the visualization and I can design it. But in this video, let's talk about a calendar functions. So there are two ways of creating the calendars. One way is by using the calendar function the other one is calendar auto function let me tell you each and everything the first function i am planning to tell you is calendar auto function so what this will do in the power bi so this is a kind of dax function in the power bi so which will help us to generate a dates between a range then how it is going to identify the range so it is going to identify the range based on the data model. So that data model should contain at least one date field. It automatically fetches the date ranges from that particular data model. So if you see in my data model, in my Power BI page design, I have a data set with a name of EMP. Under that I have a joining date. <clears throat> now, so this starting date and ending date is going to pick up from the employee data set joining date column. Now, if I use a calendar auto function, it automatically fetches the start date and end date from the joining date and it creates a dates in between that particular range. So now let me show you what is data first in the EMP data set. If you see here, I have a data starting from 2010 and ending at the 2017. So now let me create a calendar here with the help of the calendar auto function. So if you go to the calendar auto function, how to create it, go to modeling. Let's click on new table. Let me click on new table. See, you can see the description. Add a new table from a DAX expression means I will be generating a calendar with the help of the DAX expressions only. Okay, let me click on it. So once I click on it, 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 it opens a window like this and it is going to give you the name as a table. So you can keep any name. So I'm going to keep it as a dates. I'm going to keep the name as dates. And what function you are planning to use? Calendar auto. 
so here once you type like a one or two letters it automatically populates what are all the dax functions which are starting with that particular uh, word so now i have a, a calculatable calendar and calendar auto let's select the calendar auto now you can see the now you can read that particular description about calendar auto see this calendar auto is nothing but returns a table with one column of dates calculated from the model automatically if you have a multiple date fields then it automatically selects any of the column you don't need to specify the starting and ending range of the of the uh, uh, data set so now i just selected calendar auto you just need to open and close the parentheses that's it just click on enter so once you click on enter it automatically generates a dates starting from the starting date of the data model and ending at a end date of the data model yeah it is it is loading wait right? if you go here this is the one now let me go to the data modeling here if you see select this yeah do you see this these are the dates has been generated for my calendar auto function see even though my date data is there only for the specific dates for these dates only but if you go to the dates table it has been generated from the this particular start ending date and let me go for the starting date of this let's uh, sort it on the ascending then if you go for here the start date of the year is january 1st 2000 10 and it's ending with a december 31st 2017 so this is how my calendar auto function is going to work for the calendar auto function i am repeating i don't need to specify any start date and end date of the that that and start and end dates it automatically picks the value from the any data model so if you have a two data models like let us say employee table and department table which are independently contains a date field it automatically selects the starting and end date ranges so that's how we create a calendar in the dax with the help of the calendar auto the next one is calendar next one is a calendar so then how to do for the calendar prospect too the difference between calendar and calendar auto is for the calendar you need to specify the starting date and ending date of the functions so if you specify the starting and ending date it automatically generates a dates between these two ranges but for the calendar auto you don't need to specify any start and end date but for the calendar you need to specify the start and end dates you can hard code the start and end dates for the calendar function or you can read that start and end dates from the start and end dates from the data model now let me create a new table for the calendar let's go to the new table now i am going to make it as a dates again table name as dates2 it means that it is a separate function that is for calendar auto this is for the calendar now let me write calendar as even if i specify the ca it automatically shows a list of functions dax function which is starting with the calendar let's select the calendar and start date so what is the start date you need to specify you can hard code it if you want to do that otherwise you can read those from the data models now let me you can read even the description retains a table with one column of all dates between the start and end dates so these functions are the self explanatory almost now let me specify a start and end dates so i i need to write minimum of i am going to specify minimum of min of emp joining date comma max end date and this is the means what i am doing is i am directly reading the minimum date of the employee data set and the maximum date i am going to again read from the employee data set only max of max of emp or joining date so here i am not hard coding let me select this emp of joining date so let me click on now so it may take a while to generate a 
start and end dates and it, it may take a while to generate the data. If you see here, so it is starting from 10, 10, 2010. If you see that data starting range is 10, 10, 2010. Ending date is 10, 10, 2017. Now, if you go here, this is a starting date. Let me go to the ending date. Yeah, you can see it. it is ending at this particular point. But if you go to this particular uh, dates, so it is starting from the January of the year and it is ending at the December of the year. So that is the one more difference between the calendar auto. So it simply takes the year from the data model and it is starts from the particular uh, January 1st and ending at the December 31st of the year. But if you go to the calendar function, it intentionally takes starting and ending date and it is going to start from the particular date only. It does not start from the starting of the year and does not end at the ending of the year. It takes the start and end dates and it strictly start and end date in the particular dates only. So this is how I will generate a, I will create a calendar in the Power BI with the help of the DAX. So these are the straightforward functions. So these are not that much complex. Even like a, these syntaxes are available in the Microsoft MSDN site. So these two are the self-explanatory. Once you hover it, you can read it out what exactly the purpose of those two functions. So I'm repeating again, calendar required starting date and ending date and the dates has been generated in between this range only. If you go to the calendar auto function, it does not take any input from the user. It automatically take the starting year of the data model and ending year of the data model and it starts from the January 1st of the starting year and it ends at the December 31st of the ending year. So that is the difference between calendar and calendar auto functions. That's it. Thank you for watching. So if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section or in the Facebook page. Thank you for watching again. Please subscribe for more videos. Thank you.